Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. In this lesson, we're going to talk about inverse variations. And before the lesson's over, you'll understand what an inverse variation is. You'll understand what a constant of variation is. You'll know what a hyperbola is. You'll know what the branches of a hyperbola are. And you'll know what an asymptote is. What is inverse variation? Well, let's examine what it's not. Inverse variation is not direct variation. Now you've been studying direct variation for a while now and you understand what it's all about. The generic form of a direct variation is y equals a times x. The variable y equals a constant value a times the variable x. Here's an example. If we had y equals 2 times x, and we were to graph this, it would be a straight line. It would have a slope of 2. Well, what's an inverse variation? Well, instead of y equals a times x, an inverse variation is of the form y equals a divided by x. And hopefully you can see that in a direct variation, as x gets larger, y gets larger. Because if we multiply a times a larger value for x, our y is going to be a greater value. But in an inverse variation, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. Let's look at an example. Let's say we chose to look at y equals 2 divided by x. And we were going to graph that. It would look like this. That's the graph of an inverse variation. If y equals 2 divided by x looks like this hyperbola, what would y equals minus 2 divided by x look like? Well, all we've done is take every value from the first equation and multiply it by negative 1. So all our y values are going to be the opposite of the y values in the first equation. We will have reflected each of our graphs around the y-axis. And it's going to look just like this. Well, now let's tackle some inverse variation vocabulary, and we'll use this as an example. y equals 4 divided by x, which graphs just like that. Now for the vocabulary. That 4 up there, that's called the constant of variation, or sometimes the constant of proportionality. And the graph of an inverse variation characteristically looks like this. That graph's called a hyperbola. And a hyperbola has two branches on either side of the y-axis. And those branches approach the x-axis and the y-axis. And they approach it and they approach it and they approach it, but they never reach the y-axis or the x-axis. The y-axis or the x-axis is the line that the branch approaches but never touches. And that's known as the asymptote. Each branch of the hyperbola approaches both the x-axis and the y-axis, and it approaches it and gets closer and closer, but it never reaches there. The values never get to zero. We never get an x equals zero value. We never get a y equals zero value. So what's the domain and range? Well. It's all real numbers, except for zero.
Okay, it's time for you to try one. Graph x times y equals 3. And if there are any asymptotes, identify them. Hmm, what kind, what kind of variation is x times y equals 3? You know, I don't think that that's in standard form. Oh well, you figure it out. You hit your pause button, solve the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, we're asked to graph x times y equals 3, and you're going to probably want to create a table to do that, and you're probably going to want to put x times y equals 3 into standard form. In other words, I want it to read y equals something. So I'll div divide both sides of the equation by x, and I'll get an inverse variation format, y equals 3 divided by x. Now I'll create a table of x values and y values, and I'll graph those values. And sure enough, I get a hyperbola. And like all hyperbolas, there are asymptotes. There are lines that the branches approach but never reach. What are those lines? Well, they're known as the x-axis and the y-axis. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, they tell us that the relationship between x and y is an inverse variation. So we know we can write it in the inverse variation form. y equals a divided by x. And y and x are variables. A is the constant number. It's the constant of variation. And that's what we have to figure out. What is a equal to? Well, we know that when x equals 7, y equals minus 1 half. So we could insert an x of 7 and a, a y of minus 1 half into this equation. And it'd read like this. Minus 1 half equals a over 7. And then I can solve for a by multiplying both sides of the equation by 7. And I get that a equals minus 3 and 1 half. So now I'll substitute that a back into the generic equation. And I'll get y equals minus 3 and a half over x. Hit your pause button. Give this one a try and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, this makes sense. It makes sense that the higher the temperature, the smaller the amount of time it takes for ice to melt. It's an inverse variation, and it's going to be uh, writable in this form, y equals a divided by x. But in this case, x and y are not our variables. The number of hours it takes for the ice to melt is our y variable. That's what we're trying to figure out. And what's going to vary is the temperature, T. So we can rewrite this as H equals A divided by T. Now they tell us that it takes two hours for ice to melt if the temperature is 65 degrees. And we're asked to figure out what A equals. What's the constant of variation? So we'll substitute, substitute 2 for H and 65 for T. And we'll solve for A. And we'll determine that the constant of variation is 130. That's our lesson on inverse variation. I hope you understand it pretty well. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www dot mastermath dot info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes there to help make sure you understand this concept well I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon